I was born in New Jersey, and when I was five, my parents decided to move to a suburb. And we lived on the street that was the, the last street in South Orange, and the next block was North New Jersey. Living there allowed me to go to really good public schools. It was just assumed that, you know, when you graduated from high school, you would go to college. That was a culture of education that I grew up in. I realized that 50 feet over, my story would have been very different if I had been on the other side of that line. I think the thing that motivates me the most is trying to do work that erases those lines so it doesn't really matter. Um, whether you live in South Orange or whether you live in North New Jersey, you as a young student are gonna have equal opportunity to make the best of whatever your, your potential is. My grandfather was an example to me of all the things that you could achieve as an African-American person. He was able to start his own business and become successful because of it. You know, you just sort of watch someone get up every day, go do what they need to do, no excuses. And I sort of found that really inspiring and, and um, in some ways tried to model myself after that. I taught in a high school that didn't have a library. The best of teachers find you like trying to go to book banks to get free books to populate a library in your classroom. And so you're, you're sort of doing all of these supplementary things just to give kids things that are assumed are gonna be in that space. And to me, that's, that is unacceptable and unsustainable. Well, I think that education is not a, a panacea or a silver bullet. It is one of the, the critical and necessary conditions to put children, and particularly black and brown children, on a path of financial freedom. That is what I have dedicated my life to doing. So whether that be uh, teaching or going to law school and really trying to understand why isn't education a civil right to the work that we're doing now with Camelback, which is how do we bring entrepreneurs of color who are passionate about social change, and in particular education, to create ventures that are gonna erase that line. So it doesn't matter whether you live in South Orange or whether you live in Newark, the educational options that you have are gonna be great ones. Over the last two years, we've worked with 21 entrepreneurs. Collectively, they have raised over $6 million to continue to grow and fund their ventures. I don't want it to be about anything that, that I say or, you know, um, great speeches or anything like that, but just honestly about the, the work that we're doing. At the dinner table, we talk about what we do um, at work. And so for our kids to be able to say, what does daddy do? Well, he runs his own business. What does mommy do? She runs her own business. So to be able to see our kids already have that as an example, that's a very normalized sort of thing, I think is, is also very powerful. Having my own children, you know, you begin to think about the world that they're gonna enter and the legacy that you wanna build for them. What is the point of my education? What's the point of going to Ivy League Law School and all these other things if I'm not gonna do something with it? to improve the conditions of folks who were just like me when I was a kid.